In today's episode, a tank will ride a trailer, a dodge will ride onto a trailer, and a go-kart will drive underneath the trailer. A few months ago, I showed you this monstrosity built by a guy in Russia, but there is a new kid on the block, which is even lower. This is the creation of Carmageddon, a YouTube channel from Italy run by three friends. They got an old Fiat Panda from the scrapyard, cut off as much as possible but left just enough space for one person to drive this thing. Then they built a custom chassis with, I assume, a 50cc moped engine. Also, since the windows are no longer functional, they are using a GoPro mounted to the roof to, you know, see. I highly suggest you watch the full video, it's just so unreal to watch this thing driving, almost like a glitch in a video game. Spot the car challenge. Have you ever wondered whether a thin fence made out of some wires would stop a stadium truck from flying into the crowd? Yeah, me neither. All keyless entry cars are not really keyless. You know what is keyless? This system developed for the Polonis. Basically, the left plug activates the ignition system, the right plug activates the accessories like lights, and the clip activates the ignition itself. God bless Polish engineering. This is by far the worst sounding motorized vehicle that has ever existed. The owners and creators of this monstrosity have a channel called Death by Boost. I think I may have an idea why their channel is called like this. Anyways, this completely custom-built V8-powered mid-engine go-kart slash death kart features air suspension, which means it can go even lower when needed. It fits below semi-truck trailers with ease, and I don't know about you, but I want one. That's a pretty nasty cam! Here is something that I would expect to be a much more common sight in the near future. Older Corvettes being used for drifting. Especially now that pretty much all JDM cars are overpriced and more and more drift parts for Corvettes are being made. Still not convinced? Check out this C5 Corvette, absolutely killing it. Here is something that will get less and less common, and I would argue it's already super rare, at least here in Europe. A race where you can see Japanese icons like the RX-7, S2000 and Mitsubishi Evo racing against each other. Everyone who has driven a diesel car knows how much low-end torque they have, which means it's much easier to get the car rolling without even touching the throttle. Now, imagine you have more than 4 cylinders under the hood, let's say 4 times the amount. Yep, you heard it right. Audi developed a V12 diesel engine and put it into an R8. While yes, it was just a concept car, the engine itself was actually later used in the Q7 SUV. Back to the prototype, it had 650 horsepower and <clears throat> 1000 newton meters of torque. It was quicker than the petrol version to the 0 to 60 miles or 0 to 100 kilometers sprint, and the power at idle was so high that the prototype drove 50 kilometers or 30 miles an hour without even touching the throttle. You don't really need to touch the accelerator, just pop it into the gear, let out the clutch, and the R8 moves. Another contestant for the worst car related video on YouTube. Here the pixels are not too bad, but the camera work and audio make up for it. The title claims this is a Kawasaki swapped Reliant Robin. To me this looks like a blue tic tac being filmed with a calculator. <laughs> These guys took their jeep out for a spin, but the spin was meant to be vertical. Mm -hmm. 
If you upgrade your car's power, you will quickly notice that some parts may not be made for this much power. Whether it's a clutch, transmission, differential or the roof simply flying off. Only Subaru owners will know that this little move will cost around 1 liter of engine oil. You may laugh at lifted trucks until they save the day. This semi truck got stuck on an uphill hairpin and couldn't get out of the way for recovery services. However, this lifted truck came to the rescue. It crawled past the semi truck and then proceeded to pull it out of the trap. Now, a video that kind of hurts, especially if you like Honda S2000s. This driver was pushing his Honda on the Atlanta Motorsport track and it was doing well until he reached a blind corner where the asphalt very suddenly becomes grass. It sounds so simple and avoidable, but yeah, everyone does mistakes like this. While Renault is now building cars that attract middle-aged women, they used to build cars that used to attract young men. No, I am not talking about sports cars. I am talking about tanks and soldiers that were forced to attack them. This is the Renault FT, arguably the most successful tank in the First World War. While it may look goofy, it was actually this tank that influenced pretty much every single tank design that followed. Because you see, it was the first one that had a turret that could rotate 360 degrees. No matter how fast, safe or how good your traction control system is, nothing will save you from a nice big puddle of water. This Porsche driver in Poland learned about aquaplaning in the harsh way. You know what makes sense? Rotary powered race bikes. You know what does make much sense? The price of those things. This is the Crichton CR700. To get this 200 horsepower monster you need over 100,000 British pounds, which is like $130,000. Now back to why this makes sense, because you see, race bikes need their engine rebuilt quite often anyways, and we all know that rotary engines require a lot of maintenance compared to normal piston engines. Also, fuel economy does matter for race bikes, unlike street bikes where reliability and fuel economy is much more important. You will never experience the thrill and adrenaline that classic Le Mans drivers had to go through in the 1980s. Or will you? Because you see, every two years there is a Le Mans classic race. What you are watching right now in the background is the Porsche 935 fighting through the field. The cars you see give you that weird feeling of nostalgia. Honestly, I would love to be just at the track and watch those things fly by. Coincidentally, there's a Le Mans Classic race this year, in less than a month at that. That's everything for today. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. That doesn't make sense.